the Green Beret huh. of the Holy Ghost. Huh. You're the special forces. Special forces. Open up your mouth. Huh. God said, you're my secret weapon huh. against the enemy. Huh. I give you power. Huh. I anoint you tonight huh. like never before. Huh. You're the old sire. Huh. Open up your mouth and shout. Hey. Hey, 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 yeah, that's it, that's it, suicide, and be on the border tonight, because if you pray, yet up shire, drug dealers are putting down their drugs tonight, because you prayed, because you came ready, you came equipped on assignment, Hallelujah. Somebody say thank you, God. Yeah, my sire. What are the books? Come on, put your hands together and give the Lord a praise in this place. Come on, put those hands together. No, some of y'all just look at me. I said, put your hands together and give the Lord a real good praise. He's faithful. Look at somebody say, he's faithful. I mean, no, he kept you. He kept your children. Praying for those in Maryland. Another shooting in a school. Praying for those in Texas picking up packages and getting blown up. Tripwise on the lawn. But how many know God protected you and kept you? Amen. Could have been your house, your children's school. But God's been faithful. Take a moment, greet your brothers and sisters in the Lord tonight that are around you. If you if you don't know their name, take a moment, introduce yourself. We greet all of you by the way of Facebook tonight. Amen. We're excited that you're joining us for this master's class. And it is a class. Amen. Hallelujah. You guys want to flip. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Look at somebody say, God is good. And we welcome all of you that have braved the weather that is headed in our direction. But we're excited. How many of you excited about the class tonight? Now, uh, I tell you, um, I want to read a scripture to you. Um, Found in, in fact, I want to read two scriptures to you. Uh, the, the first is found in the book of Luke. Luke 16 and 12. Luke 16 and 12. it, you find it, say amen somebody. It sounds like y'all didn't find it yet. Luke 16 and 12, I'm going to read from the Amplified Bible. And if you have not proved faithful in that which belongs to another, whether God or man, who will give you that which is your own, that is the true riches. I mean, no, you're not really rich until you prove that it's not just about you, but you can work in another man's work and be faithful in it. <laughs> now, again, this is a class. Or I say, this is a class. And even though sometimes we feel like we're in church, amen. But there's some truths here, and uh, what I, what you are going to really be blessed about because. You're sitting in a class, and what you are learning is actually manifesting itself in front of your eyes. You're, 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 you are now on a journey. Tell you, you're you on a journey. How many of you here started the class in the very beginning? Okay, okay. Anybody here first time? Anybody first time? Is that first time? It's okay. Let's welcome the first time. It's okay. 
if you're going to continue with us, you make sure you get yourself a binder and we'll get you the necessary notes. Um, but if you weren't with us when we started out, we were not in this room. In fact, when we started out, we had no concept that we would be in this room. Everything was going pretty well over in the sanctuary. And then I walked in one day and I smelled steam. And when I went to inquire, they had to open up the floor and found out that uh, one of the steam pipes under the floor had broken. And so they went in to see if they could fix the one steam pipe. And the pipe kept breaking and breaking and breaking until we had to take up the whole church floor from the front to the back. And I was going, oh, my God. And I was, oh, man, what am I going to do now? And then the plumber came back and said, oh, not only do we have to take up the sanctuary floor, we have to go in the vestibule and take up all the way across the vestibule floor. And then we got to take up part of the wall going upstairs. And, and sometimes what seems to be bad is not bad at all. I mean, sometimes it's just a test. And sometimes God wants to find out is that through whatever you're going through, you can yet give God the praise in it. Ask your neighbor, can you still give God the praise no matter what you're going through? Now, if your neighbor tells you yes, they didn't give God a good praise. And if you can still give him a good praise, no matter what you're going through. And how many know the more you go through, the bigger your praise ought to be? Because always remember, your praise signifies to the enemy that I still believe that I'm a winner. That no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. And that I'm more than a conqueror. All the conquerors in the house, I am more than a conqueror. And so that's what I had to say to myself. I said, well, all this going on. And then providence that came to me and said, Pastor, I, some doors opened up. And I want to know if we get a chance uh, um, in the impact network. And if we're going back, and this is when we were in, um, <laughs> over in the bookstore. And even sitting there, no one knew that we would be here today. Now, how many of you were here last Tuesday? And so if you were here last Tuesday, none of this was here. But how many know it looks awesome? How many of y'all can give God a good praise for what you see? Now, y'all can do better than that. How many of y'all can give God a good praise for what you see now? Now, if, you, if you've got some real vision and you really understand, this, is the, th this set represents something. You know, in this room, we can put about 250 people. But because of the door that was open to Dr. Bynum, how many of you know, not, not 250 and maybe another 50 in the overflow room because we're not in the sanctuary, but how many know over 110 million people God has opened a portal for her that she'll be able to reach over 110 million people. People that are broken, that are hurting, their unsaved loved ones. And that's why I read you that scripture because you know what you see here is because she was faithful in another man's work. See, when she tells you the story about when she first met my dad she came to work in the office, and on the first day, she came in with a little scarf tied around her neck and a little two-piece suit on and her hair all done. I remember that day. And she thought she was going to be the little secretary. And Pastor Boy met her with a bucket and some Lysol and a, and a, and a scrub brush. She said, little lady, I need you to go clean the bathrooms. And she could have said, I I'm above that. I mean, wait, wait a minute. I'm not coming. I'm not coming to no bathrooms. But know what she did? She humbled herself. And went in and cleaned the bathroom. And because of her faithfulness and her ability to stay low. Touch him and say, you got to stay low. And I know some of y'all didn't even get that out of your mouth because you don't like that word. Look at your neighbor. Look him right in the eyeball and say, neighbor, you got to stay low. The Bible says, he that humbles himself. Tell me, say, you got to humble yourself. Even when people try to lift you up, you say, no, 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 no. Don't, don't let nobody mess your blessing up. When you stay low, that's how you get up. He said, if you humble yourself, I will exalt you. 
And then he says, don't you be weary in well-doing. For in due season, you'll reap if you what? If you fade not. So prophets was in the bookstore and didn't think it was highway robbery for her to be there and had a little, how many of you were over in the bookstore with us? Amen. And had little chairs there and we had the door open to the sanctuary. And during all this time, she didn't even know that somebody was watching her. Who she, who, who she had blessed way back when God initially said to her, I want you to go and sit on the floor in your house, and I just want you to talk. I just want you to minister to folk. And even during the time we were in the bookstore and some people came in, some of you came in, you testified what that time meant to you when she was just sitting, not with a camera in front of her, with a phone in front of her. But how many know... Don't ever despise small beginnings. So y'all miss a good place to give God a praise. Look, shake your name and say, don't you ever despise a small beginning. Because if you get happy over small things, how many know God will bless you with some big stuff? Now, I tell you this all the time. Your belief governs your, your behavior it governs your reality, and it governs your physiology. Because when you believe something is yours, how many know you don't have to wait for somebody to make you stand up and praise God? If you believe that, how many know you get up in a minute and start praising God? Because you understand what it represents to you. And so because, look at you and say, I'm a part of this class. And how many know the blessing always flows from the head down? So how many believe what God is doing for your teacher is about to happen for you? Okay, y'all miss it. Y'all, I'm trying to help y'all out. See, now, see, see, see I, I told you, it's your physique. You got to believe that. Let me help y'all some more. I'm going to help y'all some more. So she sat in that bookstore out of obedience to God. Sat on the floor out of obedience to God. Not knowing where, that was going to be her set. She had said, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna record from here. We're going to tape from here. And then there was a little lady who, a couple years ago, was in a very, very low place. The place was so low, she was sleeping on a pastor's couch. Didn't know where the next dollar was coming from. And out of her obedience and submission to stay low, two years later, God blessed her with wealth that she couldn't believe. And as she watched Prophet as Bynum during the time that she was low, she never forgot where she came from. Tell your neighbor, say, don't never forget where you came from. Never forget the bridge that brought you over. Never forget the folks that stood with you when you were low. Oh, that's a good place right there. And she heard prophets talking about her desire. The Bible says, if you delight yourself in me, I'll give you the desires of your heart. How many of you got some desires in your heart tonight? He said, if you just delight yourself, if you get happy, the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your what? And so it should be nothing for us when we just think about all the things that God has promised, promised us. And when you think about it and you believe it, you don't have to wait for somebody to tell you to praise God. You just start praising God because you believe, hey, you know, it's about to happen for me. Touch him and say, it's about to happen for me. So we're in the bookstore, and she's ministering over the, over, the, uh, over the internet. And one lady sees it and realizes that she had blessed her life at a low time in her life. And calls her up and says, I'd like to meet you. And when she met her, she says, whoa, 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 what do you want? How many know? See, I'm telling you, when you learn how to delight yourself in God, God got somebody waiting to bless you. How, how many believe God's got somebody waiting to bless you? While you're sitting here today, how many believe God got somebody writing a check with your name on it? Y'all yeah, don't believe that. See, Reach up and shake your name and say, you better open your mouth and give God a shout right now. While you are sitting here, somebody's thinking about you. While you're sitting here, somebody's dreaming about you. God is taking you and putting you on somebody's mind so he can bless your life. Now look over, touch the neighbor and say, I'm not going to let you tighten me up today. Amen. 
Look down your road. Tell your road. This is a praising road right here. Tell your neighbor, what gets, God, gets God's attention is a good praise. No, 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 no. I'm serious. Look at your neighbor and say, now, if you don't want to praise God, can you move yourself to, a, to the back row? Amen. But tell your neighbor, look right down the road. Say, neighbor, this whole row right here, we praise God on this row. Let, 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 let's do a little test. Let's see your role give God a good praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory God. He says he lives in your worship. He lives in your praise. The one thing the devil wants you to do is shut your mouth. But I dare you to open up your mouth and give God a shout because you've got an expectation that he is going to do exactly what he promised you. Grab your seat. My father used to say, God can do more for you in five minutes than you could do for yourself in a lifetime. And she wanted to see this woman, and the woman just asked her one question. What do you desire? What do you want? And she says, and I'm getting ready to go on television. They have this door, and I just, I want my own set. And she went and pulled out her checkbook. <laughs> See, y'all miss it. I told you, you're in this class. What happens for your teacher will happen for you. See, but you got to get glad enough. See, try to help you. See, you have to learn to tell your flesh, shut up. Now, I know most of y'all feel past. I don't feel like getting up no more. I just feel like getting up. I'm just tired. This morning in, 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 in 5 a.m. prayer, I was teaching on Jehoshaphat. And God sends them to battle. And he doesn't send them with a spear, a sword, or a bow and arrow. He sent them with a praise. They were outnumbered three to one. You had Moab, the Amorites, Mount Seir. And it looked like they were going to lose. But God gave them a word. They said, this battle is not yours. Touch your neighbor and say, the battle is not yours. Tell your neighbor, put a smile on your face. This battle is not yours. Tell your neighbor say, God got this one for you. And said, all I want you to do is say a couple words. Say, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Somebody open your mouth and say, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Say, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Somebody say, praise the Lord. For his mercy endureth forever. And while they were praising God, God made the enemy turn on their own selves. And while we were on at three with me, God put a, a burden in someone's heart to bless the vision of this great woman of God. And tonight you see the vision come alive. Tell you, let me say, you see the vision come alive. Y'all can sit down for a minute. When she said to me, she said, Pastor, after the, and, and, and this, uh, to be honest with you, this was almost pre before she even knew where the money was coming from. And she had a vision that God gave her in her heart. She said, you know, I, I, I want to find the right kind of set. I want to get the right kind of look. And I said, well, let me go look and let me go check it out and I called her and I said how about this and how about that she said I want this and I want that and how many know it's okay to dream when God gives you a vision how many know he'll bring the vision to pass and so we I was on the phone when you were coming to class months ago we were on the phone talking about this and every day going back and forth sending us pictures and we're sending pictures back and talking about it going back and forth and then last thursday everybody say last thursday a truck drove up all the way from charlotte north carolina got here at eight o'clock in the morning 
we met him outside. He opened up the door, and there were all these pieces. None of it was together. The gentleman who drove the truck, his name was Miles, and Miles got up and said, Hi, Pastor Boyd, how you doing? I said, I'm doing great. I said, let's get going. And we started bringing everything out a piece at a time. How many know sometimes, God, that's what we are, just pieces at a time. But how many know when God puts you together, you see something that you can never, ever imagine. And so this place had pieces all over the place. And then he took out a drawing. And piece by piece, we put it together. And every piece, we praise God as we put it together. Because what we saw was something. How many know that, that really does look like CNN, don't it? I got to be honest. That's one of the baddest sets I've seen. Amen. I, I, I don't know if I've seen anything better. I've seen some stuff as good. But I don't know if I've seen anything better than. And tell your neighbor, say, it ain't finished yet. And then, you know, now I, I want to say this before being the woman of God. You know, and then all that you see, it wasn't because, and this is the part that really blessed me. It wasn't because she said, okay, y'all go do this. Y'all go paint. Y'all go put up some curtains. This room is like it is because she wanted to be a finisher. I love y'all caught that. Shake your name and say, we hang out with finishers. Not procrastinators, but finishers. And so how many know when you're a good finisher, you don't leave it to be done. You make sure it gets done. And so there were many nights she was here all night long. A crew of people that really love God and volunteered their services, many of them. And they painted and they fixed curtains up and they hung lights and TVs. And even this past weekend, when this was all up, because Thursday it came, we put it all up. It was just amazing. And she said, Pastor, I want you to be the first person to preach on this stage. And I was honored, amen, that she thought that of me. And so I knew there were some things I'd done. And she went to, down to Maryland uh, to preach over the weekend. And so she said to me, don't worry, Pastor. She said, I'm coming back on Saturday night. She said, I'm going to be back on the road. I'll get back about 12 o'clock. I said, you sure? She said, don't worry. I don't want you to worry about nothing. You just go home. And so I got ready. I stayed kind of late working. And I looked around and some things weren't right. But I heard her. She said, trust me. That's what she told me. Pastor, trust me. I said, okay. And so for me, that was kind of hard because, you know, you just want to, maybe I need to stay. She may not make it. But I went home. And when I got back at 7.30 in the morning, I saw that little lady come around the corner because she had been here all night. She drove back three and a half hours to make sure this room was ready for Sunday morning service. That's what kind of teacher you got. That's what kind of teacher who, not, who leads by example. My daddy always told me, talk is cheap. Touch your neighbor and say, talk is cheap. You got to show up. You can't lead like a travel agent. You know how a travel agent leads? They tell you about it, but they've never been there. You got to lead because you are there to see the work done and finished. And you got to do it because you have a passion. And it wasn't passion just for the set. It's what the set represents. How I many of this represents a spirit of excellence? Come on, y'all. That's what's in the room. What's in this room is a spirit of excellence. What you see now becomes a part of you. Your attachment to her. Tell you, say, I feel some excellence flowing in my blood. Amen. How many you know this is a bar she set for your life? Every time you walk in the room, this is a bar. It says, this is what I'm reaching for. Amen. Whatever area you are in life, this is says, this is where I'm going. 
She could have just said, oh, it's okay. I'll leave it like it is. But how many know this room goes with the word master? The master did it. Tell your neighbor, say, the master did it. Because all the glory goes to who? But I, what I'm excited about is that this room is about to change lives. Oh, my God. This room is about to change lives. And she shared some things with me. I'm not going to say what she shared. She can share that with you. But tell your neighbor, say, the best is yet to come. Tell your neighbor, say, you ain't seen nothing yet. Just hang around a little bit. Amen. What God is about to do. She has been a blessing in my life because of her submitted and humble spirit. Because I know I'm not crazy. And you don't need to be crazy either. Dr. Bottom is like really like one in a million. Maybe one in ten million. And I, I don't say that to soup her up. I say that behind her back all the time. But I say that because what I realize in life is that knowing the value of something is critical. Miles Monroe said before he left this earth, when you don't know the value of something, you will abuse it. And sometimes abusing it is not respecting it. See, when you, when, you, when you sit in this church, you sit in literal faith. This building was birthed out of faith. This room was birthed out of faith. An ability to know that when God gives you a word, how many know he's faithful to bring it to pass? So tell your neighbors to keep your homeostasis on mark now. I cannot tell you, after she preached that message, how many times everyone's homeostasis was about to go out of here. But we had to keep our balance. Tell you them, see, you had to keep your balance. When you're up for two and three days in a row, you know, you get a little cranky. But when you understand the greater, the greater work, the greater purpose of what you're doing. So I am as excited as I can be about what God has done and what he is doing and what he's about to do. Can you just jump on your feet and give God a real big praise for this ambassador, this doctor, Dr. Juanita Bynum.
somebody ought to praise him. Somebody ought to worship him. Somebody ought to worship him. Somebody ought to worship him right now. Somebody ought to worship him right now. in the world. Thank God that he helped me every step of the way with this entire project. And I thank God because he did not laugh at my dream, even though it was big. He never said, this going to cost you a lot of money. He just kept drawing what I asked him to draw and, and called the people that I told him to call and not knowing that God had already set somebody else up to pay for it. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. And I, 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 I don't know if everybody is here, but all of the people that got up on ladders with me and stayed in this building with me and climbed scaffolds with me and helped me paint and put up lights and Put up curtains. I want you to stand, please. I, I want you to stand. I want you to stand. Mother Gathers, you gotta stand up. Mother Gathers, stand. Stand, yes. These were die-hard people in this place and they didn't quit. And they stayed there with me and they hung in there. Fabian, you should have stood up. You you stayed a couple of nights, yes. I don't want to forget nobody. Yes. Mother Gathers, I had her to stand up because she was our spot checker. <laughs> Mother Gathers kept, we were thinking we'd be finished for the night, and Mother Gathers would call me over there and say, Bynum, come here. And I say, yes, Mother Gathers. She said, there's a spot right there. <laughs> I said, where, Mother Gathers? Right there. And I'd be looking, trying to find it. And I say, where? And she look at me like, you don't see that? I said, Mother Gathers, I don't see it, but we can get up there anyway and paint just where you, go to the left with the branch. Now back this way, right there. And it would be the tiniest little spot. But Mother Gathers was making sure that everything was right. She called me when they was putting up the lights and these are the temporary lights and pastor let us take lights from next door and put up here. And um, she said, them lights ain't straight. You see how this is lined up with this pole right here? I said, Mother Gathers, they, they're going to be straight when they get up there for real. 
put up the, the podium thing. That's crooked. That, that got to come over a little bit more. So we thank God for Mother Gathers. We thank God for having a mother in the house. Amen. Amen. And our lesson also, I'd like to honor my own Nana for being here tonight, all the way from Colorado. <laughs> Pastor Dorothy Jean Smothers is here. That's the person right there that used to change my diapers. Whoop me, put me on punishment. And she still thinks she's the boss of me. She still thinks she's the boss of me. So I just thank God for my Nana, because if it wasn't for her, I probably would have been dead because she was the one that insisted that I go to the doctor when they found out that I was near death. And she said, no, I've been putting diapers on you since you was a baby and you don't look right to me. And you got to go to the doctor because I, I know what I see and I, I, something is wrong. And it was because of her that the doctors was able to find 33 fibroids and save my life. So I give God praise. Give God praise. He still has static in it. Yes. We've been talking about the finisher. The power of being a finisher. The power of being a finisher. We were leading uh, out last week, and I want to turn to Jeremiah, the first chapter, and I want to park us there because God is. He's speaking in that text, and I don't want us to, to miss it. That's Jeremiah 1, Jeremiah 1, and the 17th verse. And I want you to park a little something right there. I'm going to come back to that, okay? I'm going to come back to that, and then we're going back up again. So I'm going to park something in my, in my Bible for those of you that are watching. And we're going to go back to the book of Joshua, the fourth chapter. And I ran across something in my studying this and wanting to make sure that it was properly placed in your life from last week and the week before and talking about the power of a finisher. The power of a finisher. I was looking and realizing that there are two levels there are two levels to finishing there are two grades to finishing the first uh, scripture of the fourth chapter of Joshua says when all the nation had fully passed over the Jordan the Lord said to Joshua take twelve men from among the people one man out of every tribe and command them. Somebody say command them. Command them. Somebody say command them. command them. So did anybody read in their, in their Bible where it said ask them? It said command them. It said command them. Which means they were being told what to do. They were not asked uh, whether or not they will do it. This was a command. And so there's a real uh, level of importance when you position yourself to be told and commanded. A lot of times that the Lord would have us to do things, God would not ask us. He will command us. And if we have a problem, pastor, with the leadership, and we have a problem with being told what to do, we can never be the master intercessors. Because the majority of the times that the Lord would give you an assignment, it would be something that, it, that, that you may not want to do or something that you don't feel comfortable in doing. Amen, somebody. Just like I'll tell you one, one, of, the, one of the things in the Bible, when, uh, when Saul was, was persecuting the people of God, and, and, and God knocked him off of his donkey and blinded him. And when the Lord sent him to Ananias' house, Ananias did not want to pray for him. Okay. He did not want to entertain him. Because number one, he was afraid. He was afraid that the person that's been killing everybody would come up in my house and kill me. And now the person that have been persecuting us and persecuting the people of God 
he is now vulnerable and he is now without sight and he is now in a position where he has to depend on somebody to lead him we got him right where we want him come on somebody we can now tell him what to do we're in the position to keep him crippled for the rest of his life but the Lord commanded him that you would give your enemy his sight oh I just said something right there that you would give your enemy his sight why? why? somebody said well why would the Lord why would the Lord <laughs> command Ananias to give the enemy his sight because what God is revealing to us as master class intercessors and those of you that are watching by television and by internet what God is saying to us is that he desires for us to win the battle now I'm going to say something right here and you got to understand what God is saying he intends for us to win the battle how do you win a battle when you fight a cripple did anybody just get that you're not a winner if you're fighting somebody that is crippled. No, he wants the enemy in his full strength. So that you would know that I overcame him. You didn't let me win. I won because God gave me the victory. Woo, somebody say something right there. So he said, no, I want you to give him. I want you to lay hands on him. I want you to pray for him and give him back his sight. My God from Zion. That was a command. And it was a command to do something that I don't want to do. That I'm afraid to do. That's how this got up. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't dancing and doing a jig. I was afraid the whole time. That's when you know that you got a vision from God. Because the first thing that will hit you is fear. And the enemy will try to make you think it cannot be done. But you got to push past that fear. You got to push past what you hearing the devil say in your ears when God has given you a vision. Did somebody just get that? Did somebody just get that? No, this was scary, but it was doable. I'm not hearing y'all. It was scary, but it was doable. And why was it doable? Because it was already done. It was already done. Maybe you will catch that before I get through preaching. It was already done. In the mind of God, it was already done. The, listen, the command of the Lord was that, was that I would produce his mind. Did you just get that? The command of the Lord is that you would produce his mind. Go to that Abasha. It's not your vision, it's God's vision. It's not your desire, it's God's desire. He puts that desire on the inside of you. And your job is to be the manifestation of what he thought. Are you hearing that? Somebody say, I got that. Somebody say, I got that. That's why you don't ever have to fear whether or not it's going to come to pass. Because you didn't initiate it. You didn't start that. It didn't originate from your mind. It came from the mind of God. And when it came from the mind of God, it was already finished. He didn't show it to you half done. He showed you a vision that was finished. Somebody say, I got that. Somebody say, I got that for real. Say, I got that. I want you to think about what I'm saying to you. Anybody in here, the Lord showed you something. Somebody said, well, oh, well, you know what the Lord showed me. I saw myself in a vision and I was driving a new car. Was it a piece of car? Was it a car that only had two wheels? Was it a car with a broke door and no trunk? No, he showed you a full car. He showed you the finished work. I'm not hearing y'all. He showed you what was going to be when you got through obeying his command. Somebody said you got to obey his command. Somebody said you got to obey his command. He said this, watch this. Mm. And he commanded them, take 12 stones out of the midst of the Jordan from the place where the priest's feet stood firm. Carry them over with you and leave them at the place where you lodge tonight. Watch this, watch this. 
Then Joshua called the 12 men of the Israelites whom he had appointed, a man from each tribe. And Joshua said to them, Pass over before the ark of the, of the Lord your God in the midst of the Jordan and take up every man of you a stone on his shoulder as is the number of the tribes of Israelites. That this may be a sign among you when your children ask in time to come, what do these stones mean to you? And looking at this text, I can't help but to imagine here we have millions of people that has to pass over the Jordan. And I said this a couple of weeks ago, and it bears to be repeated. It bears to be repeated. Who is telling Joshua to do this is coming from a person that operated in the finish of his assignment. Moses' job was to take the people out of the children, out of, out of captivity, and bring them into Canaan. But when he got as far as the Lord would permit him to go, because of his ability, oh God have mercy, sometimes you have to finish early because you lose the ability. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. He wanted him to take them into Canaan. But he became entangled out of the realm that he was spoken to in. When he was up in the mountain, God spoke to him. He took him up in a realm. He went up in a dimension. And the Lord was talking to him from that dimension. He was obeying God from that dimension. Until he became entangled in another dimension. And when he became entangled in another dimension, he started minding what he was feeling. I'm not hearing y'all. And forgot that he was supposed to be operating in the faith of God that made no sense to the earth realm. It makes no sense that God would take somebody like that and cause him to become a leader when he was a murderer. When he wasn't worthy. So he starts feeling. Watch this. He starts changing. From what God is saying to do. And now I'm going to do what I feel. Y'all get on my nerves. I, 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 ain't, I ain't thinking about y'all. So I'm just going to take the stick. And I'm just going to hit the rock. Because now I ain't got it by feelings. And this is where a lot of us lose the victory. Because we get in our feelings. I'm not hearing y'all. This is where a lot of people lose out with what God has for you. Because you get in your feelings. I'm not hearing y'all. And because the devil knows that you are a feeling person, watch this. He comes to mess with your homeostasis. He comes to take you out of balance. Because he knows if you are out of balance, you can't hear. Because you're hearing from the stimulus of the offense. You're no longer hearing God. Is the Holy Ghost teaching somebody something in here? I'm being, I'm being, I'm being stimulated in my actions by, by my offense. That offended me. So I'm not going to church. That offended me. So I'm not going to work on my project. Because it offended me. What somebody did to me. Offended me. Now. I cannot. Complete my supernatural assignment. Because I have diminished myself. Back to the natural. I'm going to let y'all sit in there because I see some of y'all getting something from that. I'm going to let y'all sit in that right there. I'm going to let you sit in that. I told you, I told you, when it comes down to doing things that are prophetic, when it comes down to doing things that are supernatural, you cannot afford to vacillate back and forth. Because all the enemy wants to do is catch you out of the supernatural. Because there is no guarantee you will make it back. I'm not hearing y'all. It's a privilege to be in the supernatural. It's a privilege to keep from God in the supernatural. When you slide out of that place, there is no guarantee you will get back. Who am I talking to tonight? And so what I had to keep doing is that I can't let the devil take me out. I can't let the devil take me out. I mean, every time I felt that thing coming and, and somebody doing something to offend me, no, 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 no. Because this was in my vision. And watch this, watch this. And so, and so whatever the offense is, it's greater than the offense. 
The devil is after the vision. I'm not giving y'all. And he know he can get the vision if he can get you offended. Who am I talking to? Who is the Lord teaching to tonight? Who is God teaching to tonight? And that's why many of us fail as intercessors. We fail as intercessors because we think intercessory prayer is about what I'm feeling led to do. It is not what you are feeling led to do. It is what you are being commanded to do. Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? Tell your neighbor you got to finish. Tell your neighbor you got to finish. Tell your other neighbor you got to finish. So here it is. Watch this. So here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Moses got in his feelings. So God said, this is where you finish. I'm not hearing y'all say nothing. Because I'm talking to some people tonight, Nana, that think, well, honey, God gave it to me and, and, and he ain't going to take it. I beg the difference. If you, listen, if you keep getting in your flesh, I'm not hearing y'all. He will choose somebody else. Oh, I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. Because some of us, some of us have a spirit of grandeur where we feel like God got to use me. And because God gave it to me, honey, can't nobody take it. Well, let me help you with something. He took it from David. He took it from David. He gave him the vision to build the house of the Lord. And when he got in his flesh, God said, this is where you finish. Y'all better sit down. Y'all better sit down. This is where you finish. This is where you finish. You sleeping with Bathsheba was greater than building my temple. This is where you finish. Anything that you put in the flesh realm that is bigger than what I've given you to do, this is where you finish. I'm not giving you anything that you have more concerned about than you are concerned about what I have commanded you to do, this is where you finish. Who is God preaching to tonight? Who is he talking to tonight? Anybody that can shift your mind and shift your spirit from what God has commanded you to do, this is where you finish. So some of y'all can name y'all finish. Some of y'all can say, I finished that Willie. I finished that Sister Carol. I finished that Sister Gwen. I was going to go on further than the Lord, but you know, when, I, when I got into it with her, I finished right there. I, I, I'm not hearing y'all. Uh-uh, I can't hear you. No, no, no. I finished at the grocery store when I got into a, a fight with the cashier. That's where, that's where I finished that. No. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now up in this place right here. This is where I finished. This is where I finished. So the question is, where would you finish? Moses finished at the rock. David finished in the bed of Bathsheba. Good Lord have mercy. Good Lord have mercy. So he says here, I've given him an assignment. Watch this. I've anointed Moses. I put power in his rod. Good Lord have mercy. He performed miracles. Turn the water into blood. His rod ate up the rod of the sorceress. Caught out of bullshit and Mahaya. But yet he couldn't finish. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not, because see, you got to be careful of, oh, you know, God used me to lay hands on the sick, but you know what? There's something in you that you got to ask God to purge my spirit, and God, whatever is in me, that's going to complete, oh God, that's going to hinder me from completing what you have given me, and given me the promise. Oh God. Oh God, I feel this thing tonight. Oh God, I feel this thing tonight. And that's what's wrong with the body of Christ. We got a lot of people sitting in the body of Christ half done with attitudes and can't get their spirit right because they have regrets. They have regrets because they didn't finish right. They have regrets because they didn't complete the assignment. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. Who am I talking to? You got people walking around.
around that can't even support each other because you're angry, because you didn't finish. Y'all sit down, I gotta teach this tonight. I gotta teach this. I gotta teach this. You gotta listen, listen, listen. You got to, you got to watch the enemy. You got to watch the enemy. Like the prophet, what he got to prophesying. Oh, oh, oh listen, what he got to prophesying over Jezebel got in his feelings. I'm not kidding. She was able to say something to jump the man of God who heard from God in his feelings. And he went and sat in the cave. And when God saw that you were affected by your feelings, he said, go and anoint somebody else because you can't finish. Go and anoint Jehu and let him finish Jezebel off because she done got to your feelings. Okay, I'm not getting nobody to talk to me up in here. Who is God talking to up in this place? Is God talking to anybody else beside me? Oh, no, 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 uh-uh. See, some of y'all can look at this set and you can say, this is so beautiful, but it ain't finished. I'm not giving y'all. I told you that a compliment is a killer because you can look at something and in the natural eye, it looks finished, but that's not all. That's in the mind of God. And that's why I can't let my guards down now. I can't listen. I can't listen to the compliments now. I got to watch the devil because he's coming to try to offend me so that I won't finish. Do I have any master class students in here? I hear the Lord saying, take your finish back from the devil. No, y'all standing up in here. But I just heard him say, take your finish back from the devil. Let the enemy know tonight, you cannot have my finish. Sit down, let me, let me. Oh God. My God, I feel this tonight, y'all. I feel this thing heavy tonight. I feel it heavy. Because the devil is a vision blocker. The devil is a finish blocker. That's what his job is. It ain't about the tire. It ain't about the car. It ain't about the husband. It ain't about the wife. It ain't about nothing but the enemy is after your finish. That's all it's about. And you can give credit to whatever you want to give credit to. But in the Holy Ghost, you better open up your spiritual eyes and see that the enemy is working something underneath the bench. I'm not giving y'all talk to me. He will disguise it to look like the offense of a friend, the offense of a mother, the offense of a father. Who am I talking to? But he's really after your finish. How do I know? How do I know you about to finish? Because the warfare get worse. How do I know you about to finish? Because people do stuff that you wouldn't think they would do. How do you know you about to finish? Because the devil get even bolder than he was two weeks ago. Because he know you close. Somebody better shout in here, I'm close. I'm close. That's why he'll start presenting all kind of sexual presentations to you. Because he know you close. Hold up, I shut that out of my Somebody better give God a praise. David had a great assignment, but the enemy knew that what was hidden in him is his sexuality. Oh my God, come on here. The enemy will find it. He said, I'm all right. I done fought great battles. The Lord has been with me. You got to be careful. I killed and slew Goliath. Come on here, somebody. With five smooth stones, I was able to cut his head off. Y'all ain't hearing me. I was able to do stuff that, that nobody else could do. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Are y'all hearing this? I was riding in the city on my horse, and a man jumped out and started cursing me out in front of everybody, but I kept on riding, and I wasn't affected by that. But the enemy just waited. 
inside of Mosiah. He just waited. He just waited. He said, because guess what you do in David? You're glorying in everything that you know you have the ability to conquer. But there's one thing that you have not anticipated, and that is your eyes. When it comes down to a woman, and so what God is saying tonight, what is it about you tonight that the devil can use to block your finish? Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. He tell us to pray. And we can't even finish the intercession. Because we're intercepted. Can't even finish the prayer. Because we're intercepted. Can't even finish what God has given us to do. Because we are engaged in something that has nothing to do with the finish. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. Stuff's not happening. Some things happened this week and I was like, no, you're not a part of my finish. I will not engage in that. I'm not hearing y'all. I will not engage. Put my hermeneutic loop up on this thing. I will not, I will not engage. Put it up there. Put the hermeneutic loop. I will not engage in this. I will not let you seduce me to be engaged in another warfare that has nothing to do with my finish. Come on, somebody. I'm to war after the prophecy. I'm not to war after war. I just said something right there. My job is to war after the prophecy. My job is to fight back what will come to hinder the prophecy. My job is not to war with war. Is anybody listening? Is anybody listening? Is anybody listening? So in this text, this is what we have. We have the first line to finish. We have Joshua taking the people over. Millions of people go over and everybody starts shouting. We made it. If I want to say it here today, how many people saved? How many people saved? How many, see, we, listen, when we look at this hermeneutic loop, and see, we've been, we've, been, we've been going through the homeostasis, but I have to go back to this. And so now that, now that we have everything up here, and look, I'm going to kind of start over a little bit and help y'all out that's watching by television. <laughs> and, so, and, and, so, and, and so here we are. Here we are. We are, we are in the hermeneutic loop, and we are in the engagement. We are engaging in a phenomenon. We are, we, oh God, mm, mm, mm. are y'all seeing this? This thing just took me out. We are engaging with a phenomenon. Some, somebody offending you is not a phenomenon. Okay, I'm, I'm going to say that again. Somebody offending you is not a phenomenon. And the, what am I saying? What am I saying? What am I saying? We're engaging in stuff that is beneath us. Now I'm going to help somebody tonight. I said, we are engaging in stuff that is beneath us. We are engaging in, what, watch this, with people that are beneath you. We are engaging in people that are not where you are. They are not going where you are. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. And you're wasting your time to argue. You're wasting your time. I'm not hearing y'all. But the enemy knows that you are traveling somewhere. And so when he knows he can't stop you, he will delay you. I just said something right there. When he know he can't stop you, he will delay you. And watch this. A delay is just as bad as being stopped. And somebody said, why? Because everything with God is timing. Everything with God is timing. And if the devil, watch this. If the devil can't make you miss it, he'll make you do the right thing in the wrong timing. Is anybody listening? So Moses done led these people. Joshua picks up the assignment because he couldn't finish. And the Bible said that another spirit was on Joshua and Caleb. A different spirit. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Was on Joshua and Caleb. Right. Tell somebody, if you're going to do this thing in this hour, you better get another spirit. Yeah. Somebody said, Dr. Bonnie, what you talking about another spirit? What are you talking about a different spirit? Okay, I'll tell you why. 
when they had the anointing on them to finish. To finish. We headed to the victory now, because that's that's a whole nother spirit. You know, you got you got you got one spirit when you fight to get through and you halfway there. But when you can see the finish line, there's a whole nother anointing come on you. There's a whole nother anointing come on you. When you listen, when you able to look back and say, We done been through the worst of it. I mean 75% of it is all gone. I only got 25% to go. I think I can make it now. So Joshua, they said, well, we're going to take 12 people. I'm going to choose 10 more. And we're going to all go and look at the promise. We're going to all go over in Canaan before the people get there. We're going to look at the promise. I want to show y'all something. We're going to go look at what God is going to do. They went and stood in it. I don't think you heard what I said. They went, Mother Gathers, and stood on the property that they dreamed of being there. Family done died in the wilderness and didn't make it. And here they stand in the property on the promise, seeing the good of the land. And the first thing they noticed was not the promise, but the giants. You said, that's like God promising you a brand new car and you get inside the car and say, I see an ant. You get inside the car and say, somebody steal somebody here on the seat. That's they looked to people that were of the supernatural. When 10 said, we can't do this. The two that was of a finishing spirit. Oh God, I'm not here. See, when you of a finishing spirit, you will look at something that somebody else will look at and they think that it is awesome. But you will look at it and say, this ain't nothing. This ain't nothing because I waited too long for this promise. This ain't nothing because I done been to hell and back for this promise. I'm not going to let what I'm looking at appear to be bigger than my God. Who am I talking to right now? Whatever the devil is trying to pull over you, it's not bigger than your God. Oh God, he's talking. I got to say that one more time. I got to say that one more time. It ain't bigger than your God. Oh, I can't get none of y'all to go with me because you think it is. Because some of y'all standing here in the warfare. Tell me, but you don't know what I'm going through. But you don't know my God. Who am I talking to? You don't know what I'm dealing with. But you don't know the power of God. You don't know that all things work together for the good of them that love God. And to those that are called according to his purpose. You don't know that it's working out to your advantage. You don't know that God is about to slay the enemy right before you. You don't know that he will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. Y'all, 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 sit down, I can't. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna do that yet. Sit down. Mm. Ooh. So here he is now. Here he is now. We're going across. And everybody, well, what's the difference between, why are we in a master class? Why is this a master class? Why is this considered a master class? Because the first group goes over. Millions of people walking over. So he causes the priest to take the Ark of the Covenant, go down in the Jordan, stand in the middle of the Jordan. The waters part. And while the people are passing through, they're holding the Ark of the Covenant. See, I, I, wanna, I wanna really paint this picture to you. I said millions <laughs> A people has to pass through the Jordan while a few people hold the ark the entire time. 
So finishers can't be tired people. I can't, I can't hardly get no, no real amen right there. Finishers cannot be tired people. Finishers cannot be people. Watch this. That is, that is, that is not physically equipped for the journey. I'm not here. Oh, y'all just think I'm talking about uh, being a vegan because I see there's on me. No, 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 no. A finisher cannot be a person that walks in the spirit of gluttony. A finisher has to be a person that understands I need my body to be in pristine shape in order to finish. Because this is a heavy assignment. This is not lightweight. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? You want to be an intercessor? You can't a minute. Who am I talking to? You want to be a master intercessor? You can't pray for two minutes. I'm not hearing y'all talk. If the Holy Ghost said march around this building a hundred times by ten, you would be out of it. Who am I talking to? The power of God would not sit on the rack of body. You want God to do the supernatural in your life. You got to give him a body that can handle the supernatural. <laughs> Who is God talking to? Who is God talking to? Who is God talking to? So here Joshua is. The priest is like this for millions of people. For millions of people. For millions of people. Not a few hundred. Millions. I want y'all to get this. Millions. It's hot. Their face was something they'd never been faced with before. They don't know what's in the mind of God. Watch this, Mother God. They don't know if when they get to my cousin's tribe, the Jordan going to come down on all them. Because everybody ain't been in the right spirit the whole trip. So they, so they don't even know if God going to get them out there. And when they get to be half of us, he's going to cut us off. Y'all in. So, so they had to walk through. They had to walk through Sam. Mercy, Lord Jesus. They had to walk through. Come on, somebody. They, they couldn't even dance through. They had to walk through watching, watching the Jordan walls. Look, looking at each other. They had to walk through saying, God, anything I did, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just sorry because I know, I know I doubted you. And some of they, some of they family behind them, so they turn around, walking back, was saying, please don't let it come down on my grandmama. She didn't mean to be cussing like that. God, please don't let it come down on my uncle because I know he evil and he beat his wife and all that. Oh God, oh, oh, they, uh, come on, keep going. And they got, 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 got to keep, keep, keep walking. And then, and then, and then they got to walk past. They got to walk past where the priest is, is holding the ark. And you know that's been in the holies of holies, so you ain't never been close to that in the first place. So now, now, now you got to turn your head like, oh, Jesus, I'm passing God himself now. And then you get on the other side. And this is, this is for millions of people. This is, this is their plight. Oh, Jesus. Everybody. Everybody's scared. Joshua is under a command. He remembered that they said that the Jordan was split when Elijah's mantle fell for Elisha. He remember when Moses parted the Red Sea. And so he's saying, but I remember when he let his hands down, how all the army was swallowed up, which means this thing can swallow you up. So he's like, oh, Jesus. Okay. Okay. Woo. And then the Bible said, and when the last few people got on the other side, and they was all over, and the priest was left there. And the priest was coming on in. And everybody just started shouting. Woo! We made it. We all made it. And Joshua come over and said, You, 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 you. And he goes, so, Yes. Go back in there. <laughs> Hold up. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. I done made it out of this thing. Now you want me to go back in there and you want me to pick up a rock for a testimony? Are you kidding me? He 
said, no, somebody out of all of these millions of people got to be able to bear the testimony of the Lord. That's why he called you to be a master intercessor because somebody got to be able to testify that I didn't just go through one time, but I've been through many times. Who am I? Oh, God, I got what it takes for God to send me back in. Lord, I just came through that. I need you to go back in. But Lord, you just brought me out of that. I need you to go get a rock. Wait a minute. I just got through walking through hell for two years. I need you to go back and get another rock. Well, why? Because somebody got to testify of my goodness. Somebody got to testify that I'm a healer. Somebody got to testify I'm a miracle worker. Somebody got to testify on the way out. Somebody got to testify on the way in. Somebody got to testify I do deliver from cancer. Somebody got to testify I do deliver from AIDS. Somebody got to have a rock that says I do deliver from heart disease and tuberculosis. Who am I talking to? Somebody got to bear the rock. A master class. A master class. I'm not talking about you being a Christian where you rock. I'm not talking about you jumping and shouting. Where is your rock? I'm not hearing y'all. My class done got quiet. Everybody done went home. Y'all done fell asleep? Where's your rock? Where's your rock that you're trying to keep hand to your pair, to your pair partner? Where is the rock that you don't want to carry? Where is the rock that you keep asking people to pray it off of you? I'm not giving y'all talk back to me when you've been chosen to pick the rock up. Can't nobody pray it off of you. You got to carry it. Who am I talking to about internet? Who is God talking to? Who is God talking to? One out of every tribe. Well, this ain't Israel. What's your last name, Cummins? One out of every tribe. What's your last name? Huh? Satan. Satan. One out of every tribe. What's your last name? David. Chosen, you it. One out of every tribe. I'm not hearing y'all. Smothers? Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Why me? Why me? One out of every tribe have got to be the one that I call to walk to hell. One out of every... Oh, God, I can't get nobody to help me in this place today. Everybody do not want to say yes to the Lord tonight. Everybody got to have one out of every tribe. Why I got to be... Why I got to be the one? Why well, I got to be the one? How you know you're the one? Cause this is what you sound like. It always happened to me. Is that every time I can never get, I can just get one foot in and the next foot come out. I don't even know why this devil been in here. I just bought my car and then they they hit my car and I just got my couch and they spilled some. Some, some juice on my couch and won't come out. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. He need that rock. Somebody said, well, Dr. Bottom, I don't know why we gotta, we gotta be the one to, to go in and get the rock because you said you wanna be like Jesus. And the Bible said that's who he is. He is my what? Okay, come on, somebody. He is what? He is what? He is what? My, my, my rock, my rock. He is my rock. And what makes him my rock? Because he is the testimony that you can't be crucified and you can't be resurrected again. I'm not giving you. He is my rock. He is my rock. That's what you call him. You call him your rock. And you are able to survive every day of your life because of your rock. Because you look at your rock and he bears the testimony that he overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the words of his testimony. He is your rock. But whose rock will you be?
You want to be like him. And he's a rock. But you don't want to go back in. They said the climb down to the bottom of the Jordan was steep. And so you had to go deep. Down. 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 Into the muddy Jordan. Can't get nobody to talk to me. But why, do, why did they have to go back in? Why did they have to go down? What did they have to do? What the other rock did before the foundation of the world was laid? He was crucified. And then he was born. He came into the world. And he got in that same Jordan. And they took him down. They, they, they took him down. Y'all ain't saying that. It wasn't until they took the word down that the heavens opened up. When the heavens saw the word being willing to go down. Okay, I'm not hearing y'all. All y'all want to be on the valley. Tap, all want to be on the mountain. Tap, hallelujah. No, 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 no. I need somebody to go down. I'm not hearing y'all. Why is everybody quiet in here? Why is everybody quiet in here? I need somebody to get baptized in your purpose. Why? Oh, why you hold up? Good Lord have mercy. I just felt that right there. I said he needs somebody to get baptized in your purpose. To be submerged in what I told you to do. No, no, this is nothing that you peek in your head in. I need you to take your body under. I need every part of you to come under this thing. I need every, every ounce of you to be submerged in this thing. I need every part of you to tell me yes about this. Because I can't get nobody to say nothing. I can't get nobody to say nothing. I can't get nobody to say nothing. No, this ain't that, this ain't that, this ain't that kind of word. This ain't that kind of word. Go back in and pick up a rock. Go back in and get the rock. Lord, I don't want to go back because I just, I just came and I done already made it. I'm saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't want to go, go back. Go back in where the word is. Because you out here with the people celebrating. Wow. And I've called, I've called you to go and stick with the word. You go where the word is. You go back and stand in danger where the word is standing. You go back and stand in opposition where the word is standing. You go back and take a chance the way the word is taking a chance. Because everybody that's standing in there holding that up, listen, listen, they're taking a chance because they don't even know what's in the mind of God. All they know is that I got the word on my shoulder and my word split it, so the word got to keep me. I want you to go back to that. I want you to have that kind of walk with me that anything that you need when it comes in contact with what I'm carrying, it's got to open up for me. See, this is how you get heaven open. This is how you get revelation. This is how you get miracles. This is how you get the supernatural. I'm not giving you the devil watch this he doesn't back up off of you because you got tongues he backs up off of you when he see you carrying a rock because he know oh god he knows that if you carry the rock you're under the protection of god and god he is going to deliver you somebody give god a shout right now somebody give him a shout right now what separates you that's what separates you that's what separates you that's what separates you from being a regular Christian hmm. 
how they said, when, when they brought down the Georgia Dome, I was in my prayer room and I called one of my spiritual daughters. I said, go and get me a rock from the debris. She said, mother, why do you want to have a rock? I said, because it's my testimony. See, when you're a master class intercessor, you ought to be able to go in your backpack. Somebody start talking about, I don't know if I can make it. She said, hold on, hold on, hold on a minute. Let me go in my backpack. I think I got, I think I got a rock for that. Hold on. You just stick this up. Oh, you, oh, you think you're going to die from this sickness because you know I had cancer too. So hold on. I got a rock for that. Watch, watch, watch this. Watch this. And so, and so just like God, God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. And when the son came, he called him a rock and he gave him to us. No, go in your bag and say, here, <laughs> here you can hold my rock. Because listen, listen, as long as you got your business right here in your hand, you know that God is able because if he did it for me, he going to do it for you. Who am I talking to? When somebody tell you that they ain't got no money and they get ready to be set outside, you say, hold on one minute, I got a rock for that. Because I remember when they took my house, but God made them give it back. I remember when I was broke and living in the hotel and didn't have no money and God did that for me. Oh, oh, wait a minute. You need a rock of finances. Here it is. Come on, baby. You can hold my rock. And as long as you get that rock, you can know that if God did it for Dr. Bottom, he'll do it for me. And somebody said, but you know what? I'm kind of going through something because I feel real heavy and I feel forsaken. Hold on a minute. I got a rock for that because I remember when everybody walked away from me. But the Bible said that when your mother and your father forsake you, that God will lift you up. I got a rock for that too. Come on, somebody. You better open up your mouth up in here. Because in this building right now, watching my television, watching by the internet, you're not going through for nothing. You're going through because you are a rock. You got rocks in your back pocket. You better pull them out and tell the devil, I made it through this and I'm going to make it again. Hallelujah. Somebody give God a praise.
Jesus against its priest, against the people of the land, giving you divine strength, which no hostile power can overcome. You better give God a praise. Say, die. I make you a fortified city. Somebody tell God yes. Say 
So whatever you do, whatever you say, this is my prayer that you do it your way. My soul says yes. My soul says yes to your will. Can I say that again for somebody? So whatever you do, whatever you choose, God, this is my prayer that you do it your way. My soul says yes. My soul says yes to your will. Come on, everybody, say my
watching by internet. You're watching by television. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Somebody just give God a praise after the Holy Ghost. Somebody give God a praise after the Holy Ghost. you to lift your hands up right where you are. God is doing something awesome in your life right now. And I can sense it and feel it that the enemy has tried to be an interceptor. And he's tried to interrupt your journey. But I came to tell you tonight that the devil do not win. You're going to finish your course. And not only are you going to finish it, you're going to finish it with joy. Come on, somebody in this place. I said you're going to finish your course with joy. And I know it's been rough. And I know it's been hard. But I've got to say this to you. I know this beyond a shadow of a doubt. That you were chosen for such a time as this. You were chosen to walk through exactly what you're walking through. But I'm here to tell you that on the other side of this, God is going to get the victory out of this. God is going to get the glory out of this. And tonight all I want you to do is lift up your hands and give God praise. Because the Bible says he knows the way that I take. And when he has tried me, I'm coming out like pure gold. Somebody help them praise God right now. My soul says yes. He's talking to you. He's ministering to you. He's ministering to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for joining us tonight. And if tonight has been a blessing to your life, just reach up there and push the contact button and sow your 121 seed. You said, Dr. Bottom, I don't have 121. Well, sow 21. But you got to put a seed and allow that seed to connect to what God is saying. The Bible said that when God got finished speaking to Abraham, that he poured out a seed before the Lord in the figure eight. And the Lord put him to sleep and the spirit of the Lord walked through his sacrifice. And all I can tell you tonight is that God is going to walk through your sacrifice. Push your hand up and go to the contact button. He said, tonight I'm going to connect with what is happening in that room. I'm going to sow my 121. Because I'm going to tell you like my pastor used to say. God can do more for you in five minutes than you can do for yourself in a lifetime. One act of obedience can break the back of the devil. That's right. The Lord is releasing a command tonight that you sow something into what God is saying. He said tonight your seed is going to break the back of the enemy. It's going to slap his hand down from trying to be an interceptor to what God has promised you. You don't want the finish where you couldn't finish. You want the finish that is connected to a promise. And tonight you're going to get that promise. 